Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Chang, director and writer of the movie Ghost Source Zero. I'm Joe Barbagallo, producer and actor in Ghost Source Zero. And you're with the 13th Wolfman. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know who I have with me today? I have Mark Cheng and Joe Barbagallo. They are the guys behind the newest movie coming out, uh, Ghost Source Zero. Welcome to Sit Down, guys. Wow, thanks for having us. Thanks, Wolfman. Hey, I, I want to see this movie. This looks like a good movie. Can you get, can you, uh, could one of you guys give us a quick synopsis of the storyline? Oh, synopsis? Okay. You're good at that. Ghost Star Zero is a sci-fi action movie set in the not-too-distant future where uh, android innovation has been outlawed. So illegal crime syndicates are the ones innovating. And Joe Barbagallo here plays um, the head of a cybercrime division tasked with taking down one of the largest multinational crime syndicates. Ooh. And in the process, discovers a terrifying secret. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds really good. What was the inspiration for this movie? Uh, inspiration. It's probably from my childhood, a combination of Aliens and Blade Runner, loving both of those movies. Yeah. Um, and having spent uh, several years working in uh, software development, just having all of these ideas that I felt would, would move that genre forward that I think were unexplored. Cool, cool. And you guys are being, uh, it's produced by both of you, but uh, the website for this is, uh, is Planet Nerd Rage. Yes. So the backstory here is that um, years ago I decided to do, uh, create a fan film, and I wanted to do a fan film from something that hadn't really, uh, didn't really have too much of a fan film following yet, uh, and I really wanted something from my childhood. So I picked G.I. Joe, and I made a, a G.I. Joe fan film, and Joe, Joe was in the movie. Um, Beachhead. He played a character, Beachhead. I remember Beachhead. And, uh, the film, you know, was received well enough that I started to get fans emailing me, telling me that I should, eat, I should send the movie to uh, Larry Hama. And <laughs> at the time, I'm like, wait, that sounds familiar, but who is that guy again? And they're like, oh, my God, like, you're supposed to be a fan. He, was, he created all the G.I. Joe characters in, uh, for Marvel Comics in the 80s. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's the guy. And I ran back to my comic book collection and, like, opened it up and saw that he was credited in all of them. Um, and uh, I found him on Facebook and sent it to him. And um, he dug the movie and was like, hey, we should meet and, and talk film. And it, it turned out that we hit it off and had a lot of, like, the same favorite fa uh, films. And at the end, we're like, hey, we should make a movie together. Uh, and Larry was like, yes, but let's do something original so we can own the whole thing. And that was kind of the start of the, the entire idea. Right. You don't got to give anything up to Hasbro. Absolutely. So, so Larry is also our uh, co-executive producer as well. Yeah. That is very cool. Yeah, I, I, I love how uh, social media is bringing fans and movie makers together. Dude, um, it's, it's amazing. I, I've been a horror fan since I was five. Uh -huh. And one of my all-time favorite horror movies is probably one of the cheesiest all-time favorite horror movies is Chopping Mall. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and I'm a huge fan of Jim Wynorski's. I mean, so one day I looked him up on Facebook, and I chat with him all the time now. That's, That's awesome. amazing. That's <laughs> It's the coolest thing. I It's just... No one saw this. I'm serious. No one saw this in the 1980s. It's like, hey, we're just going to be able to to chat with everybody via internet, you know? Totally. And it's like, um, it's like a fanboy's dream really to like, you meet the creators and then something like this happens where you collaborate together. It's just really amazing. It's really so amazing. it sounds like you've been wanting to be a filmmaker your entire life, Mark. Yeah. I mean, I, when I was younger, I watched a lot of movies. I discovered my dad's like shoulder mounted, like VHS camcorder and would make like <laughs> Kung Fu movies with my friends in the backyard. Um, Study, ended up studying film at Cornell in college um, and just kept that with me to, to keep making them on the side and, and pouring, you know, your savings into, like, these little short films. And then something like the G.I. Joe film really, like, brought everything together. Um, we met Larry, and the really, it really just took off from there. How did you two meet? 
because you, you guys are saying they were from different areas, you know, so, growing up. I met Us Mar- too? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, I met Mark 12 years? 12 years ago? Oh, my God. When yeah. Started, when yeah, 10 years ago. 10, 10, 12 years ago, I auditioned for his um, sci-fi <laughs> film called Deployment Strategy. And uh, I was blown away by what he did. I was doing a lot of indie films at that time. And I was blown away what he managed to do with such a small budget. And I've never worked on a sci-fi independent small <laughs> film before in my life. And, you know, he had in his, in his basement, he had like a drop ship <laughs> built in there. You know, he's got – and I'm just like, this, is, this guy is like, you know <laughs> – He's married and he's got like a house and everything. And I'm going in there and there's like a drop ship and all these like weapons and everything else like that. I'm like, this is kind of cool. And, um, and you know, we did that, that film. That was awesome. That 10, 12, 10, maybe. It's like 10, we shot it on like mini DV. So it was like, <laughs> yeah. I remember those. Wow. Yeah. And ever since then, uh, Mark, I knew I wanted to work with Mark after that film. That was the, the most pleasurable experience I've had on a, on a set um, before, during, and after. Um, and probably the most successful film when at that time of my life, uh, out of all the films I've done, uh-huh. uh, we've gotten a, a lot of attention, uh, and we had an awesome premiere at like MTV. At well, the time. deployment strategy did pretty well, like considering it was like SV back in the day. Like we did like, um, I think almost a year of festivals. Yeah, we went to like eight or eight or nine film festivals for. Um, for short films in the genre. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. I, I remember we went to a festival together and uh, we've known each other for a year and we're like, we made it. We made it. <laughs> yeah, we, made it. we went to this action film festival. I think it was in California, Long Beach. <laughs> we went to this film festival and we're like so excited because it was our first film festival and we go in and like there was nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were expecting maybe like a standing ovation <laughs> or people us. It was just like a broken down, like yeah. mallish place. Yeah, 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 it was on like a. Yeah, it was we were really like, uh, okay. <laughs> and like 50 It was people. humbling. It, it was, was humbling. For absolutely. Sure. absolutely. Um, so but you know, you, you keep going at it. Like that did, that did, we were happy with it. Some festivals were hit or miss. Uh, we kept in touch. Absolutely. And then. Um, I can't remember exactly how the G.I. Joe film came about. Like, we just talked about it well, or something? Uh, I was lucky to work with Mark every, you know, we did a, a 40-hour film festival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. We did, we, did a, we did a few things. He would always call me back for, for something every two, three years. Yeah, so the, the back story is that, like, I started working uh, at MTV Nickelodeon ar- around that time. Exactly. And uh, working in, like, web development as an engineer. And, like, I wanted to make sure I kept making short films. So, like... He and I would like uh, keep in touch with each other and kind of like remind each other what we really wanted to do, and we would make like a series of like short films together. And then I think the GI Joe film came around, right? And that's how we met. And, oh, very and cool. talking about the GI Joe film, when yeah. he gave me the script, and when I did not know what was going on in the film, I don't know if you saw really? the film. Yeah, I mean, really? I knew my part, right? <laughs> but if I don't want to spoil the ending. I just don't know what happens in the end and what's going – like, I was like, what? I'm like, this is – I don't know if this is going to work, but I trust Mark because every time he does something that I don't understand, it usually does work and people like it. And obviously, you know, with the with the fanfare attention, it, it, it did very well. See, the, the whole idea of, like, um, doing this G.I. Joe fan film was I wanted to, like, incorporate, like, when you're kids and you play with act, your action figures together, you right. mix the universes together all the time. So you've got, like – your G.I. Joe, your Star Wars, you know, like your Terminator, your Aliens, like Marvel yeah, Universe, and you just yeah. mix it up. And, and that's exactly. kind of the idea. But to film it in a way that was like what you, what, what, as a kid, you imagined it in your head. So it's like Black Hawk Down with a mixture of all these weird characters. <laughs> yeah. And that was the idea behind that. Well, he's telling me this now. <laughs> he didn't know. But like during the time, it was like, uh, why are there Transformers? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm like it's a trans-dimensional portal that like Dr. Mindbender created. Like, all right, just deal I'm with like, it. Okay, <laughs> it's right. Sliders, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally like that. And then so after that, I think we kind of talked about like, hey, I had been making films by myself, really much, really like as a, as a crew of one. I'd have my own have my own audio setup just connected on top of the camera. And then I think we started talking about, well, how can we scale? And to scale, we should we need extra people. I can't do it by myself. And then. Joe had, had done some producing on the side as well. So I think we just formed a partnership. Um, and that's what Planet Nerd Rage Productions w- is. 
a result. I love the name. I love the name Planet Nerd Rage. That's that's <laughs> great. I was surprised it wasn't taken actually. Planet yeah. Nerd Rage. So, so how? I mean, all I've seen for the movie is the trailer. Uh-huh. How far along are you? Uh, when can we expect to see it? Oh, done. The film done. is the film is done. It's taken three years. It was originally um, originally conceived as a uh, a web series. So like each episode each episode would be like three to five minutes, um, and they'd be filmed back to back to back. And pretty soon after we started filming, we realized that like, wow, that location in episode three is going to come back in episode seven. So <laughs> we should just film it all together. And at that point, we're like, I, I think this is just turning into a feature. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you see the film, it's like you get these little vignettes. You'll kind of see what we're talking about in terms of like chapters. Um, but it's strung along and paced very much like a traditional feature. It's 95 minutes. Yep, 90, 93. Nice. 93 minutes long, full feature, like completely done. So that trailer, I know some people cut trailers first to try to get interest. But like right. it's a full 93 completed film. I think there's like over 120 visual effects in it, um, professionally scored and mixed and stuff. So it's legit. It's legit, man. Yeah, so you got you got Joe in it, Joe, Joe Barbagallo, Gene Sato, Kay Jami, and a few others. Uh-huh. I mean, was it just traditional? Uh, were these friends that you knew, or was this traditional auditioning, or what? Um, I would say half of it is probably... Um, actors who I had worked with in the past or built relationships with in the past that I'm like, wow, you were in that small bit part, but I think you did such a good job. I'd love to give you a, a meteor role. Um, it's set, it's kind of constructed to be more of like an ensemble cast, kind of like G.I. Joe, you know, Larry's involved and kind of shines here in that there's so many different characters that are often in the background, but they each have like their own characterization and special skill and, and moment to shine in, in, in the larger script. So that's largely, and so some some people were were cast just for this, and found just for this project, and other people were uh, were friends of ours, I'd say. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Nepotism, can't beat that. <laughs> <huh>? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so again, when uh, I sorry, uh, when will we expect to see this? I mean, you oh. said it took three years, so. Um, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I can't really speak about it because we're under contract. Uh, okay. But hopefully very, very soon. Within a few weeks, I'll know when that time frame will be. With, um, but hopefully like early uh, early next year, January, February. Yeah. Okay. So when you do find out, you know, get in Absolutely. touch with us. We'll, we'll bring you guys back on and we'll, you know, we'll talk we'll about it. Back. You know. sure. Absolutely. So guys, we got the trailer. Uh, would one of you like to introduce the trailer for this film? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so you're about to see what we call the first look trailer. It's longer than the standard 15 or 30 second trailers you see on TV because it's meant to give potential distributors a deeper look at the story, the production value, what they'd be getting at, um, and it probably reveals more about the plot points than what a typical trailer would reveal, but we're happy to show it to you and hope you are excited uh, to watch it. Nobody in the robotics business wants AI rights. You recognize civil rights, regulators will come into play. By the end of 2052, Oon Tong was by far the largest multinational crime syndicate in the world. I've mapped the consciousness of a human and transferred it into a robot. We're going to bring the Oon Tong down. We are cybercrime. Long time no see, Captain. I need you. Who else? The Oon Tong is stepping up in computer virus attacks and plowing profits back into bioengineering. We need to know why. The level of sophistication is too high for this just to be a random attack. This guy must be important. Who are you? I need answers. I need you to trust me, and I need to trust you. I tried to pull the plug on it. They took her. They told me the deal was off. But this time, we found something else. Or are you still getting the spiritual guidance for that black message? Listen, we're the 
We're good guys, okay? We're here to help you, but you gotta come with us right now. You regard us as intellectual property, a competitive advantage. One, two, three! And that's the trailer. So, yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, dude, this this was so much fun. I loved watching the trailer. I really did. Uh, Kevin, one of the guys from the Dorkanine, you know, he, he popped it up and he goes, dude, he goes, check this out. He goes, what do you think? I go, yeah, we book them. Yeah. That's, exactly, that's exactly what I said. I said, book them. Awesome. You know, and uh, so you guys made a great trailer. So I'm right. guessing it's going to be a great movie. Thank you. So, so, so where can people find you if they're looking for you online? PlanetNerdRage.com. I think PlanetNerdRage.com is is a safe place to start, or you can and you can or you could search for that on Facebook because that's where a lot of our updates go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, what for Joe Barbagallo and Mark Chang? I'm the Thirteenth Wolfman, and of course, I'm on the prowl. <laughs>